Today we're gonna do one of my favorite experiments with isopropyl alcohol and compare it in a way that I've never even done before with steel wool. Along the way, I'll try to explain my thinking. Let me know in the comments the things that we should revise or change. Let's get started. Let's get our experiment set up. Get a tray that you can fill with water. I'll use this dissection tray. Fill the tray with water, do lots of trials with water height, and you'll notice some different results. Grab a small beaker or stand. I add a little water for stability. Then put a watch glass on it or some other non-flammable container. I'll be using 91% isopropyl, but you can experiment with 50 and 70% as well. The second experiment will use steel wool. Try to figure out the chemical and experimental differences between experiment one with the alcohol and experiment two with the steel wool. Let's get our 91%. Mmm, love that. Add a little, about half a mil, but not too much. Grab some matches or a lighter and light that baby up. What's going on now? The combustion equation of alcohol is two alcohols reacting with nine oxygens to produce six carbon dioxides and eight waters. Secondly, the air around the flame is hot and that's significantly less dense than air further from the flame, maybe looking a little like this. Cover the flame with a large beaker and observe. <laughs> Every time, I love that. Have you ever seen anything so cool? I just love this experiment. I actually fell in love with this experiment using a candle. I have a few here that I lit and covered. I'll speed this up, but you get a similar result that happens a bit slower and for very similar reasons. It's also on the safer side if alcohol is a little concerning. Did you notice any non-obvious clues about the alcohol in the candle? Let me know in the comments. So an initial explanation might look a little like this. We have the tray, beaker, and lens with isopropyl alcohol. Before lighting, the alcohol is on the left. After lighting, it's on the right. And this is what I think is happening before the flame gets covered. There are roughly evenly spaced air molecules in our system. Then the water fills the tray. We could say the density of the air molecules in all places is about equal, and since the flame is not lit yet, the temperature at all locations is also about equal. Then we light the alcohol. The temperature around the fire increases relative to the air that's further from the flame. This speeds up the air molecules close to the flame, causing them to spread out and be less numerous. In terms of density, the air around the flame is now less dense with faster moving air than the surrounding cooler air. This hot, less dense region is what is going to be covered. Let's draw our covered situation now while the flame is burning and later when the flame goes out. The air inside is hotter than outside. The density inside is less than outside. But the water level inside is staying relatively constant while the flame burns, which means atmospheric pressure outside on the water is about equal to the pressure inside the beaker. Now here are some observations. The water seemed to get sucked into the beaker like magic. Also, the inside of the beaker got foggy. That's condensation. Here we go. While the flame was burning, the inside was hot. Then the flame goes out and the interior cools. The temperature inside begins to be roughly equal to the outside temperature, and now some chemistry comes into play. The combustion of isopropyl is the alcohol in green reacting with the oxygen in pink to produce carbon dioxide in orange and water in blue. The state of the alcohol, oxygen, and carbon dioxide is gas. Do you think I should list the alcohol as a gas? Let me know. What state is water in? If we draw a little graph of the states of water, we can see something happens to water above 100 degrees Celsius. It's a gas. Below 100 degrees Celsius, it moves back into liquid under typical pressures. Coming out of the flame, the water is way over 100 degrees Celsius, so it starts out as a gas in our experiment. I think the ratio of how this reaction occurs is also important. Two alcohols react with nine oxygens to produce six carbon dioxides and eight waters. Now at this stage, just know I'm simplifying things a bit by leaving out nitrogen, which is the majority of what we think of as air. Let me know how you think nitrogen alters the explanation. For two vapor alcohols to react, they need nine oxygens to crash into. That's a total of 11 gas molecules, since I'm including the alcohol. That is going to rearrange into six carbon dioxide gas molecules that are moving really fast, and eight hot gaseous waters. Once the waters hit the beaker walls, they cool below 100 degrees Celsius and condense into a liquid, which don't contribute to air pressure too much at that point. That leaves six carbon dioxide gas molecules contributing to pressure, where before there were 11, nine of which came from the oxygen. That means based on the temperature drop and the decrease in gas molecules, 
the interior pressure of the beaker should drop pretty significantly. To compensate for this decrease in pressure, the water was pushed in by the exterior atmospheric pressure, which in turn decreased the amount of air inside the beaker, which increased the interior pressure. Nature stops filling the beaker once the interior and exterior pressure are about equal again. Let me just add now that if you do this practice of drawing your thoughts out, it makes it way easier to come up with follow-up experiments to collect interesting data. Draw your thinking, my friends. I find it pretty fun. If you have thoughts at this stage, let me know in the comments. But let's keep going. Watch that reaction now with a fresh perspective. Now the steel wool, I've been excited to try since someone requested that in the comments a little while back. Let's fluff it out here. You can try different levels of fluffiness and see what kind of results you get. The sequence of events for steel wool is a little different than the alcohol. Look at that, fluffy as a cotton ball. Beaker ready, light it with a nine volt, and knock it over. Covering it while it's hot would compromise the result, so I'll try again. Fluff, place, and light steel wool. Look at the bubbles. We didn't see that before. What could cause that? Notice the glass? There's little to no condensation. See the steel wool? Not fully reacted. The part of the steel wool that is bluish is reacted, but that gray part is unreacted. See if we touch the unreacted, it'll still react. I still think this is one of the coolest looking reactions. With steel wool, I think it goes a little like this. Here's the air inside and outside, with about 21% of that being oxygen. Once again, I'll just focus on the oxygen. The steel wool is mainly iron, seen as Fe. Iron, Fe, reacts with the oxygen gas, the pink O2, to produce iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3, in blue. The oxygen is a gas, but the iron and iron oxide are solids. The 9 volt battery initiates the reaction and we quickly cover before the air is heated much. The heat from the reaction radiates out, warming the air so the temperature inside the beaker gets hotter than the temperature outside the beaker. This makes the pressure inside the beaker rise so the interior pressure is greater than the exterior pressure. This pushes the water down as air bubbles out of the jar. The air and water leaving the jar result in a decrease of interior pressure. In this reaction, four irons react with three oxygen gases to produce two iron oxides. That's like these three oxygen reacting with these four irons to produce two iron oxides. I drew that happening one more time, but we can imagine it happening many, many more times. Now a general principle of air pressure is only molecules in the gas phase contribute to air pressure. So let's put some pieces together. While the steel wool burns, the air leaves because it's hot resulting in less air molecules. When the steel wool goes out, the temperature inside and outside the jar start to equalize, but the density of the air on the inside has decreased since air molecules left when hot. So the two reasons for air density decrease are temperature related, and number two, the oxygen left the gas phase, becoming a solid when they reacted with the iron, which also reduces the number of gas molecules inside and subsequently the air density. Less gas molecules at roughly even temperature means a pressure decrease on the surface of the water. Exterior pressure pushes water in, raising the water level in the beaker, which decreases the air volume and increases the pressure until air pressure inside and out are about equal again. So pressure was low, then raised when the water filled. Let's see that one more time now. Don't you just love that experiment? The subtle difference between those two is really neat. For an experiment that will challenge you even more, check this one out.